Hello dear friends and welcome to the Geo Coast. Here I'm standing on the south coast of Ireland, just a few meters away from the waters of the Atlantic Ocean, overlooking the Rogers Point Lighthouse, marking the entrance to Cork Harbour. One day I even painted this view on a piece of old red Devonian sandstone that I picked from a local beach. Many times I have been passing this lighthouse, heading out on research cruises on board various research vessels to explore and map the seabed of the Northeast Atlantic. A lot of this research activity was devoted to scientific investigations of island's coral reefs. Yes, that's right, I didn't make a mistake here. Although most people would associate corals with warm tropical waters, but in Irish territorial waters we have some of the largest and probably some of the most beautiful coral reefs in the world. We are talking about the cold water corals. So at the time of those deep marine expeditions, uh, between the years 2000 and 2005, I was lucky to work together and under the supervision of Dr. Andy Wheeler, who is one of the main leaders of cold water coral research in Ireland. The main result of this work was a 500-page doctorate thesis, which I have defended at University College Cork in 2005. So, a 500-page book all about Irish deep water corals. And in the next few minutes, I will share some of my knowledge about this beautiful reef. This map shows you the distribution of corals in Irish territorial waters. As you may see, they mostly grow on parts of the continental slope to the west of Ireland at water depths ranging between 6 to 1,000 meters. The main difference between the cold water and the shallow water tropical corals is that they are able to survive in complete darkness below, below the light penetration depth and can tolerate water temperatures as low as 4 degrees Celsius. At first, large carbonate mounds were noted on commercial seismic data, and later the multi-beam technology allowed to map them in three dimensions. Then we had a closer look at them with the side scan sonar, which showed that the surface of these mounds has a rubbery texture. Here you can see how the here you can see the side scan sonar imagery draped over multi-beam bathymetry. And sampling and underwater video surveys have shown that this rubbery texture caused by coral framework. The dominant reef-forming species on the northeast Atlantic margin are Lafilia pertusa and, and Madripora oculata, which has thinner branches. This is another coral species called Dismophilum cristagale. So, these examples have been sampled with a box core at water depths of, of around 800 meters, about 200 kilometers to the west of Ireland in the eastern porcupine sea bite. We have also analyzed hundreds of hours of underwater videos that we have filmed with the remotely operated vehicle, ROV, equipped with waterproof cameras and powerful lights. As remember, we are working in complete darkness as the light penetrates only the upper 200 meters of the water column. On these photographs you can see how corals look like when they are alive. You can see that they grow in areas with active currents as indicated by sand ripples on this photo mosaic of the seabed between large mounds. Here we can see how coral colonize sand waves and this is what causing rubbery texture on the side scan sonar imagery. We should mention that corals normally grow in distinct localities known as provinces and may form small patches on seabed, small coral topped mounds between 25 to 100 meters across and up to 5 meters high, or giant or large carbonate mounds which could be between 1 and 5 kilometers across and up to 50 to 300 meters high. In order to start growing, coral require a suitable hot substrate to which they can attach. This can be represented by stones, shells or man-made objects such as shipwrecks or even oil industry installations. Furthermore, corals need clean and fast-flowing water and a sufficient food supply as they feed on particles like plankton supplied by deep sea currents in contrast to shallow water corals that get energy from symbiotic algae. Detailed multidisciplinary investigations have shown that we find live corals only in areas with clean water. 
and in parts of the continental slope with increased sedimentation rates. For example, where we have the formation of the contourite drift deposits, which is at about 600 meters water depth on the slope to the west of Ireland. And you can see the illustration of the contourite drift forming on this seismic profile. In this situation, coral polyps get clogged with sediments and the coral reefs, if you like, retires, as individual corals will die. Okay, but why are deep water corals important? First of all, they are associated with high biodiversity. Although warm tropical reefs have higher diversity of the coral species in comparison to cold water reefs, uh, the cold water reefs normally constructed with one or two main coral species, like I showed you, but the diversity of associated fauna is much higher in cold water corals. So in the reefs to the west of Ireland, there has been about 900 species of associated fauna identified. Also, fish are attracted to coral populated areas because they provide enhanced feeding possibilities, a hiding place and a nursery area. Unfortunately, as most ecosystems on this planet, cold water corals are also threatened by human activities. Commercial deep sea fishing and the expanding offshore oil industry are the main threats to deep water corals. These activities can affect corals' vitality through pollution, mechanical impact and increased sedimentation rates. For example, bottom trawling for deep sea fish like orange arafi has been shown to completely destroy coral reefs beyond recovery. Drilling operations, like for oil for example, are likely to increase the amount of suspended sediment that clog coral polyps and together with oil pollution can harm corals. So for a few years we've been doing this deep coral research and as a result and recognition of their importance as habitats and their natural heritage significance, some of Ireland's deep water coral settlements have been designated as the first marine special areas of conservation, SACs. Also, investigation of these coral mounds can help to study past climate changes. Together with colleagues from France and Belgium, I have analyzed the number of 10 to 30 meter long sediment cores, which we took through the carbonate mounds. So we sampled the very top of the mounds, as remember, uh, mounds are elevated about two to 300 meters above the seabed. And by dating this course and extrapolating, we have suggested that these carbonate mounds on which the corals are found initiated their growth about two million years ago, around the beginning of the Quaternary period. This educated guess was later confirmed by the ocean drilling program, which drilled to the base of the, of the mounds. So <clears throat> by looking at the internal structure of the mound, we can see that during warm interglacial periods, mound elevation was driven by biological coral growth with the average mound growth rate of about 10 centimeters per 1000 year. And during cold glacial periods, biologically driven mound growth stopped, but mound elevation continued due to deposition of sediments, um, like from melting icebergs, with the average mound growth rate of five to six centimeters per 1,000 year. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the GeoCoast YouTube channel to see more videos about islands, coastal and marine environments. And please share and like this video if you found it interesting.